All righty, good friends. Welcome back to the St. Paul Handicapable Ministry YouTube service on this May the 15th, 2024. All right, Jesse, we've worked hard. We've got some new formats for some of the songs that we love to sing. And Zach Kears is one of the favorite songs of mine. It's those of you who know me well know I really love this song. Okay, Jesse, let's see how we look tonight. Singing Zach Kears. Zacchaeus was a muscle-bound man, and he climbed up the telephone pole. He was a little man. No, he was. Ah, hey, hey. Hey, Liz and Cindy, welcome back. Okay. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. And we do know that uh, Jesus did go to the home of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus became a changed man. He asked Jesus to forgive him for all the time he took more money than he should have from the Jewish people he was collecting money for. And he became a changed person. And that's the wonderful thing that's available to all of us. We can sin, we can go astray, but we can always go back to Jesus, and Jesus will always welcome us with those great big wide open, open arms of his and say, listen, come back in to me, and I will be with you and walk with you every step of the way, and we need to ask for forgiveness of our sins and then try to do our best and not commit those sins. A new song that maybe you haven't heard uh, since we've been doing our YouTube services Jesus Loves the Church. It may have been a while since you've heard it, but this is a beautiful song. In fact, this is one of the favorite songs of Kim Morris, who for years has been one of our faithful members of Handy Capable. Kim, we miss you and hope you'll be back with us soon. I know you've been experiencing some health issues right now, but we love you with the love of the Lord. Okay, Jesse, Jesus Loves the Little Children. Now, you used to, oh. You reckon we can get, I don't think we can get this to work because Jim's not here. We've lost the magic touch. All right, listen, all right, everybody, I want you to concentrate real hard, okay? We got to see if we can make the ball appear, okay? Up here. I don't think, I don't know how to do it. Let's all concentrate real hard. I know Jim's not here. Do you think we can do it without Jim? Ring, I should call him, tell him he needs to get over here so we can get the ball moving. Well, let me see if I can get him. Let's just watch and concentrate real hard. Just you got that camera right on the ball up there. I just don't believe it's going to happen. Something moving. Oh, look, there it comes right there. Oh, it's right off of Jim's head. Oh, it's off the little boy's head. It's going up to the twin's glove. He caught it. Woo-hoo. Renee, how did that happen? That, man, I'm telling you what, wow, okay. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. One more time. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. How about that, Virginia? Woo -hoo. Last week we showed a drama from Dr. Bill Fritz. We've got a second version of his animals all right, Bill, everybody tighten up your seat belts because it's going to be a lot of funnies and a lot of laughs. Here we go.
highlight tonight is about going on handy retreats. You know, when we first started the ministry and Bill, we went uh, to Leesburg for our retreats. And then shortly thereafter, we started going to, when Bill left to go back to Canada, we started going down to Riverside Retreat, which is in South uh, Florida. It's about 25 miles east of Fort Myers. And we would go there. This will bring back a lot of wonderful memories of things that we did with our handy retreats. All right, here we go. Our first retreat Bill organized was to go to Leesburg, Florida, where the Florida United Methodist Church Conference had outstanding retreat facilities available for use by ministries such as ours. In 1999, several of our handy members boarded Old Glory Bus for the 90-minute drive to Leesburg. What an experience we had. Bill had numerous activities planned. We continued to go to Leesburg each year thereafter for the duration of Bill's stay at St. Paul UMC and a couple of years thereafter as well. In 2005, we made our first trip to Riverside Retreat located in Alva, Florida, which is about 25 miles east of Fort Myers. We continued to go there for years until 2016 when the decision was made to postpone one year when we had bus problems. The following year, we ran into problems with having enough volunteers who could come to help out with chores and supervision. From that point, we decided to look for other activities which would involve more participation by a growing number of handy students and volunteers. The key person who made these trips so enjoyable for so many years was our number one handy ambassador, Vicki Anderson. Vicki, who joined our ministry in 1998, is the most organized person I have ever encountered. She knew exactly how much food to purchase to feed our hungry group. Our retreats were held from Friday evening until Sunday lunch. Not only did Vicki purchase the food, but she was chef number one and a wonderful cook. Vicki had lots of help in the kitchen preparing and serving the food. Other key role leaders in this capacity were Ola Joseph, Joanne Koth, Nancy Adi, Dee Bartlett, and some of Ola's granddaughters, among others. Vicki was also responsible for the preparation of social activities for our group. Most of the years we went to Riverside Retreat, we had upwards of 50 attendees. Every time we went, Vicki would prepare activity books that each camper was given, and it was our responsibility to complete them to the best of our abilities. Vicki's weekend of activities kept us busy the whole time. We will forever cherish these wonderful days in our memory banks. Vicki, we thank you and appreciate you so much. Jesus has promised to us, in Him who is the source of my strength, I have strength for everything. Never forget that. All of us, regardless of how strong we may be, we could go to the gym every single day, so we could have muscles galore, but at times our bodies grow weak, our spiritual side may grow weak, and emotionally we may grow weak, but we can always call upon Jesus that He can give us that extra strength that we need to work through the process of getting corrected back to where we should be with our different types of strengths that we have. All right, it's time to go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for once again of gathering together as the family of God. I'm just so blessed by this handy, capable family. I'm so blessed by this church. And, oh, Father, you know, the world that we live in right now is a very trying world. It's a, it's a lot of chaos that's there. And I think one of the things that's missing in our world is just kindness. I think if we could try to be kinder to each other, try to be more understanding of people and try to see other people, maybe the people that we disagree with through the, your eyes and through your uh, different ways of telling us the truths of life and trying to be those people that you call us to be as followers of yours. Bless us in all that we do for we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, we continue with our Christian rules to live by. So tonight we're going to be looking at bear each other's burdens. Galatians 6, verse 2 from the New Testament, carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Love that verse right there, I really do. Uh, there you can see that is the cross that was outside 
one of our dormitories we used to always stay in when we would go to the Riverside Retreat. And uh, the, the lodge would be divided. The guys would sleep on one side. The ladies would sleep on the other side. <clears throat> we had a common ground in the middle where we'd have uh, do activities. We'd have our meals and all. But uh, we had a wonderful time. I love that picture. Every year that we went, we always took a picture of everybody that we could get under the cross that was there. Talking about bearing some of the uh, burdens that we had, it wasn't necessarily a burden, but they were chores that had to be done. And you can see uh, Nancy, you can see Ola, and you can see Vicki. One of the first things in the morning, Vicki would like to get up at like 5 o'clock, 4.30 to 5 o'clock, and start preparing our breakfast for it. And Ola would come in, and Nancy would come in, and they would prepare. We'd have like scrambled eggs and sausage, and a cereal, uh, crescent road. It was a wonderful, wonderful time of being able to work together. She had the kitchen help, and then all of us as individual took part in cleaning off the tables and making sure everything was clean when we got through with each one of our meals. Another thing we used to do, we used to love to go out during the day on some of the excursions that we had, and Vicki had lined up things that we were supposed to do, and one of the places we had to go and try to find things was the chapel in the Wildwood. And you can see pictures right there. We had gone to the chapel in the Wildwood. And you can see that there's uh, Chris that uh, is in the wheelchair there, or the scooter, actually. And we all went there and we were looking for certain things. It shows the, the magnificence of God and the beauty of things to who's the things he's created through uh, nature and everything, but we would be there helping each other, encouraging each other. Another thing we used to do when we had downtime, we'd love to play golf or some would be playing uh, tennis or some may be playing volleyball. We were constantly doing things and we had a group of us that liked to play golf. So some of us would bring our golf clubs and be out there playing golf. I know Todd and I had uh, special matches. We were playing like we were playing in the Masters or the U.S. Open or the PGA Tournament. We had great fun, and Todd is an excellent golfer. In fact, we have several members of Handicaper who today are still a part of the uh, golfing team for Special Olympics. You'll see some of them right there. Another thing that we did as far as having activities and funds and getting closer to God, we would have different type of activities. We would have things that were arranged by Vicki, where there would be uh, puzzles that we could do. We'd have arts and crafts. You can see right there, there's Eric, one of our longtime handicapable members that's a part of Crossroad Group Homes and Seminole. And we'd make these little banners like you had right there. Believe in the, the picture of the cross. We were all believers that were there. And we had an opportunity to share our experiences and talk about things that are important to us in our faith journey and all. Another thing that we did too, as far as some of the burdens that we carried, is when we went to do a Washington trip, when back then it was so much easier to do travel, that was back in uh, May, uh, the first part of June in 2002, right before Bill Fritz would depart to go back home in Canada. Some of the pictures right there, it shows people who are still actively involved and handicapable. Here we are, 22 years later, but as we went and we actually ended up having a lot of activities at McLean Bible Church, it's in, uh, right outside of uh, Washington in McLean, uh, Virginia, and we had the opportunity to kind of watch over each other, take care of each other, because in a large city we had to be aware of where we were, and we also, you know, try to be uh, on the lookout and make sure that we're all safe together. And there you can see us at the Lincoln Memorial. We used to have the opportunity and love the opportunity of going and visiting historical sites and seeing just what a great country that we do live in. Aren't we blessed to have not only this great country that we live in, but have a great church like St. Paul United Methodist Church and a wonderful ministry, St. Paul Handicapable Ministry, and all the other ministries to support the community right here in the local area at Largo and beyond. 
All right, Jesus wants to become better followers of him. Three things we need to do. We need to follow Jesus, read, believe, and act on his word. And we need to pray for strength and guidance. And we do those things, it's going to help keep us on that narrow road of righteousness. It's been such a joy to be with you. Don't forget, we'll be back next week. And also, don't forget, if you have not subscribed, subscribe to our services. And be sure and come to our in-person worship services. Every Wednesday, we start at 6.30. Come to St. Paul United Methodist Church, the corner of Highland and Rosary. And we'll see you Wednesday night, either on YouTube or also on our big channel, YouTube. Thank you and God bless you. Have a wonderful week.